Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to tell you what you absolutely have to know before you make your own bread. Let's get into it. Now, if you're currently watching this video, it's probably because your grocery stores no longer look like this, and instead they look like this. And so that puts us in a position where now we have to hunt down bread or figure out how is bread even made? Who knows? Because now all of a sudden, you're like a pirate hunting for treasure. And remember when shiny new things were like iPhones and whatever, but now this is the treasure. It's flour. So if we can't find bread, and then we can't find flour, what's a person supposed to do? Just stop eating bread? No, of course not. This is bread we're talking about, people. Get serious. What we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out how to make it ourselves, so let me show you how. Okay, let me introduce you to my little friend. His name is Wheat. There you go. Did you guys know that wheat, I mean, we've all seen this before, that turns into a wheat berry, and that is where bread comes from. And um, much to my surprise, it is not just made out of wheat, okay? So that is a whole grain, and I'm gonna show you kind of how you turn that into bread. But guys, whole grains aren't just wheat. Apparently it's barley, oats, rice, all kinds of other fun stuff ends up in your bread packet. Now, why do you need to know any of this? Simple, because if you know what kind of bread you want, whether it's white, wheat, or some combination in between, then you will know exactly how to make whatever bread you want. Guys, this is really honestly liberating and it's super easy. Let me explain it to you. Okay, so this is a, an anatomical representation of that grain that I just showed you. And you see that it only has three parts, the bran on the outside, the endosperm in the middle, and the germ in the very, very center. I know what you're thinking. Yeah, okay, cool, Rafaela. I came here to learn how to make bread, not get a science lecture, but stay with me. So when bread is being commercially prepared, they're taking whole grains of various different kinds, and then they are doing this. They're grinding up, obviously not in a blend tech, and then they have this, and then they separate it using a sifter. Of course, a commercial kind, but kind of like you see me doing here. If you're anything like me, you're standing there in the grocery store, and you're looking at this, and you know that whole wheat is supposed to be better than white, but what is whole grain, multigrain, who knows? I don't know. Well, I'm going to tell you, like, literally in the fastest way possible. Okay, this guy, it's white bread. We all know it tastes delicious, but it's not good for you. And why is it not good for you? Because they take the bran and the germ, and they take them out, and white bread is just all endosperm. So it's just all, like, the starchy part, right? Because the bran is what gives you fiber, and the germ is where you get the protein and fat, and then the endosperm is basically just starch and carbs. So... Tastes delicious, but it's not very good for you. We have this little gem, enriched white bread. What does that mean? That's exactly like white bread, except that they're adding in other vitamins and nutrients like B12 and things like that. And this is done in an attempt to add back some of the nutrients that they pulled out when they pulled off the bran and the germ. So why didn't you just leave it in there? We all know why, because it doesn't taste as good. Okay, moving on. Okay, so did y'all know that wheat bread is and can just still be white bread? I did not know that, big shocker, okay? I feel like I've been duped my whole life. So apparently, when you take out just the endosperm and maybe you add in a brown coloring, look, you can call it wheat bread, but it's not whole wheat and that's what you wanna eat. It's, uh, it's white bread that looks brown. Oh, and maybe sometimes it looks like this. Then we get our little friend multi-grain bread, and that's just multiple grains. That doesn't mean that any of them are wheat. Uh, look, if, if this is blowing y'all's mind, trust me, Mind officially blown. But multigrain just means that they put multiple different things in here, like rice, barley, whatever, or the parts of them. Doesn't mean that they use the entire grain, AKA doesn't mean that it's good for you. So if you're looking to see how much wheat is in it, look at the ingredients list on the back and see where wheat is in the lineup. If it's up towards the top of the ingredient list, then a lot of it is wheat. And if it's somewhere down towards the bottom, then you have a lot of filler in your bread. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you. Okay, now we're getting to the wallet busters. All right, whole wheat bread. Yes, that means that it is whole wheat. It is this entire grain, the bran, the endosperm, the germ, meaning that all of its nutritional profile is still intact. So that's why maybe it doesn't taste as delicious. And that is also, guys, why it's brown. I, I am not even lying to you. I feel like, how did I make it to this age and not know this about bread? Anyway, moving on. If you really want to cry when you're buying bread, just buy a loaf of Ezekiel bread. Delicious, but woo, tough on the wallet. And that is because they are using the entire grain of multiple grains. Okay, so that's whole grain bread. It means they're not pulling out the stuff that is good for you. Well, now you're a bread expert and you're welcome. I mean, I know that was a little bit painful, but now you know and you'll know for the rest of your life. So you don't ever have to be confused in a bread aisle again. And guys, this is what it looks like up close and personal. This is all-purpose flour, a.k.a bleached, enriched, um, the worst kind of flour, but probably also tastes the best. On the left, on the right is whole wheat flour, and there in the middle 
is going to be all purpose flour with vital wheat gluten, which is bread flour. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second. You can call me Jack Sparrow because apparently I am the luckiest pirate on the planet because I did find a bag of all-purpose flour. And I also have vital wheat gluten, and that is how you make bread flour. So it's basically, and I know there are a lot of different recipes online, but basically one cup of all-purpose flour to one teaspoon of vital wheat gluten. And vital wheat gluten is basically protein, and it helps with elasticity and rise to retain gas, and it gives better volume when you're cooking. So that is why you would add it. So basically what you're doing is you're adding back some of the properties that they stripped out when they made all-purpose flour. All right, moving on. In case you're gonna ask, which I know that you will because I asked the same question, apparently you can sub out regular all-purpose flour for bread flour. So if you don't have bread flour, apparently you can just use all-purpose flour. Of course, it may affect how tall your bread gets or consistency, but it's not like the bread police are gonna come for you, okay? Next, let's assume that you are not the luckiest person on the planet and you couldn't find flour. So where does that leave you? It leaves you buying wheat berries. And there are all kinds of different things. And guys, let me give you the 30 second version, okay? Wheat berries have three different variations, hard or soft, and then something called a varietal, which is basically color, red, white, or other colors, and planting season, winter, spring, summer. So that's what you see right there. You see hard, red, winter wheat berries, okay? So there are different kinds of berries that are better for different kinds of things. Basically anything that's a hard wheat has more protein and more gluten, that's gonna be better for bread. And anything that is a soft wheat is gonna have less protein and less gluten and it's gonna be good for cakes or cookies. So if you can't find flour, just go to Amazon and then if you're trying to make bread, you would want any kind of a hard wheat berry. And if you're trying to make basically anything else, you're gonna be looking for a soft wheat berry. So there you go, that's pretty much all you need to know about wheat berries. And this is a great time for me to remind you guys that everything that I am mentioning or using in this video is gonna be linked down below. So this stuff is still available on Amazon. I know that because I literally just ordered another bag of it this morning. So, I mean, you, you can pick up any different combination. In this video, I'm gonna be using the hard red and the hard white to make the um, whole wheat bread. So let's get to that. I know what you guys are thinking. Ah, oh, yes, we're 10 minutes into this video and she's finally making bread. But guys, without that other information, you wouldn't really know what to buy or what to do with it. So that's why I put it there because that's all the stuff I had to look up and I was trying to save you the trouble. Sorry. Anyway, okay, so you're gonna take whatever berries that you want, wheat berries obviously, and then you're gonna put them into, I mean, they have things that crush up rice, specifically for rice, but I'm not bougie like that. So we'll just be using the blend tech. Okay, it's a blend deck, that's a little bougie. Anyway, and depending on how you want your bread, you know, you can do ultra fine or medium or coarse, but I would start with coarse, or excuse me, not coarse, with fine because you're just gonna get better bread that way. So you're just gonna mill them up, and for this one, I'm, you see me really, really crushing this stuff down because I'm just gonna do whole wheat, and that is what whole wheat flour looks like, what? See how it's like floury and powdery and I'm going back and forth between my phone and my camera. All right, so if you were trying to make regular bread out of wheat berries, then you would use this sifter, again, link down below, and you would pull out the germ and the uh, bran and just leave the endosperm, which is the all-purpose flour, basically, that you see me flipping around in the bowl here. Quick note that I did wanna mention, if I were you, I would take out the amount that you're going to grind up and I would flash freeze it for maybe like an hour because when you're grinding it, those, um, the flour can get really, really hot and that can affect how your bread rises and whatnot. So just throw them in there for like an hour and then go ahead and grind them up and you'll be good to go. So this is where you have to choose. Do you want to have wheat bread or white bread? Or maybe you're like me and you just wanted to have both. So we made both in this video. So let's do that. I think we did white first. Let's look. All right. And for the purposes of this video, I am going to be using the store-bought all-purpose flour, and then I'm gonna actually use the wheat berries for the wheat bread. All right, so we're going to take, we are going to add 1.5 cups of warm water, and then we are going to add three cups of bread flour or all-purpose flour. So if you don't have bread flour, just do three cups of all-purpose flour, and then add three teaspoons of vital wheat gluten if you have it, because that will turn it into bread flour. If you don't, just roll the dice and be a crazy person and just do it with all-purpose flour, and let me know in the comments below how it turns out. Recipes are in the description box below, so I'm gonna go through this really fast. It's 1.5 cups of warm water, one teaspoon, active dry yeast or any other kind of yeast, one and a half teaspoons of any kind of salt. Then you're gonna stir it gently and then add in three cups of bread flour or all-purpose flour. And then you're just gonna kind of roll it together and you're just gonna kind of pull it together like this and roll it and just make sure that all that flour is incorporated, but definitely don't pull it out and knead it because then it wouldn't be no knead bread. And this was super, super easy and did actually end up being our favorite of the two, so this one's gonna get done a lot in our house. And then once you've done that, you wanna go ahead and 
cover it up and put it in the oven. And I'm I'm doing a recipe that I think it's called like poor man's Dutch oven, no need bread or whatever. It's all over YouTube. And so that's what I'm doing in this video. And it turned out really, really well. So kudos to him. All right, now that the dough knows who's in charge, just go ahead and cover it with saran wrap and stick it in your oven and turn your oven light on. That's all, just your oven light for an hour and a half and let it, he called it proof. And then you do what's called degas pull and stretch, which basically just means like poke it with a spoon and then, you know, kind of pull it and stretch it and then sprinkle it with flour and roll it and throw it in a bread baking dish. I'm sure there's a more appropriate name for it. I don't know what it is. But before you put it in there, go ahead and spray the sides with cooking spray, obviously. And then you're just gonna kind of throw it in the bottom of the pan. Don't do anything else to it. And then you secure it. Now, if you have a Dutch oven, use the Dutch oven. But if you don't, you can just use these and then use these little binder clips. And again, everything is linked down below. And then you go ahead and put that in the oven. As I accidentally forgot to get a clip of something, which is why you see saran wrap here. You would not want saran wrap in yours, okay? So take the saran wrap off and then put it in here and put it in your 400 degree preheated oven for 35 minutes and then just pull it out and put it back in for five to 10 minutes just to kind of brown the top. And stay tuned to the end of the video because I am gonna cut it, slap some butter on it. We're gonna taste test it for you guys because this stuff, oh good Lord, I'm having very, very lustful thoughts about that bread. Let's move on to the wheat bread, which is what you see on the left over there. Okay, so make your life easier and just take a cup and a half of hard red and a cup and a half of hard white and go ahead and grind them up. And if there's any excess, put it in your refrigerator. But the actual recipe that I used called for two and three quarter cups of, and that's the ground version, okay? So once you're done, two and three quarter cups. And again, the recipe is down in the description box below. So I'm gonna fly through this. So you're gonna go ahead and grind it up as fine as you like. I mean, that's what it looks like before. And then that's middle. I put mine on the ice cream setting like three different times. Um, so that I could get it really, really nice and fine. Because we're doing whole wheat bread, we don't have to run it through a sifter or any fun stuff like that. So what we need is just one cup of warm water and then a half a tablespoon of any kind of yeast, two and a half tablespoons of olive oil, a quarter cup of honey if you want it to be sweet, you don't have to put that in there, one teaspoon of any kind of salt, and then you're gonna mix all your wet ingredients together and then go ahead and add in your beautiful freshly ground whole wheat flour. All right, and then you're just gonna incorporate all your ingredients. So just roll them all together, but you don't have to be super meticulous about it because we're gonna need this either by hand or with a stand mixer. So just go ahead and roll it around and you'll be rolling. Okay, we're making bread, stay focused. All right, now you can knead it by hand or you can just put it in here. I just threw mine in the stand mixer for 10 minutes on low. And then I put it inside one of those little baking tins and I covered it in saran wrap. And um, then I just set it on the counter for like 30 minutes so that it could proof. And then once that was done, you want to go ahead and pull off the saran wrap, not like you see me doing here. So pull off the saran wrap and put it in an oven that is preheated to 350 degrees for 25 to, mine actually took 35 minutes. Um, and then this is kind of what you have. And then you can throw it back in there for five or 10 minutes just to brown it and then cut it up and eat it. I mean, this one was not our favorite, but it actually turned out really well. Like if you put some kind of a jam on here, I think this would be just delicious. And if you were making like a BLT with it or something, Oh yeah, this was super good. But I definitely noticed that there was a difference in consistency between the ones that you need and the ones that you don't need. Like you can see it right here. On the left is the wheat bread and that's the one that was kneaded. And you see it kind of knocks out like I guess all the air pockets and everything. So you get this very dense, it really tastes exactly like commercial wheat bread, which as you know, is kind of boring all by itself. Um, and on the right, you have that beautiful no knead bread and I, it was better. It just had a better texture. It was more chewy. It was, just, it was better. Okay, sorry, there you go. I think next time I might try to do a whole wheat bread but do a no need version. I'll let you know how that comes out. If you guys want to know, leave it in the comments down below. All right, now let's cut into these little beauties and eat them. All right, so I'm using this um, this little like bread slicer thing, which I completely forgot that I've owned forever, but it's great because it gives you really nicely sliced bread. Um, and you, oh, you tell me that did not, mm, just the steam coming off this bread. It wasn't great for my hands, but oh my goodness, it smells so good. I cannot wait to eat this. All right, and then we're just going to add some butter here. Mm. Let me just bring on the calories. Look at this, it's so good. Ah, yummy. All right, now we're gonna slice into this wheat bread and mm, this is, I actually had it this morning, I'm not even gonna lie, and I put some Nutella on it and because it was a honey wheat, it was really, really good. So I filmed this yesterday, I hadn't tasted it with anything sweet on top. I have now changed my mind. I still like the white better, but yeah, this is delicious. White wheat, white wheat, maybe both, who knows? All right, let's taste these little guys. 
All right, so you know I'm going to bring my little people out here and I'm going to have them taste test it because let's be honest, children are honest, sometimes painfully so. So uh, let's go get them. Okay, white or wheat, let's see what they think. This video made you want bread. Please like this video because now I want to go eat another piece of bread and I'm just sitting here editing. First tasting tribute is going to be Sassy Pants Ava and let's see which one she likes. All right, I first give her the wheat bread and she says that she really likes it and I think she's being honest and then when I give her the other one, I realize maybe she wasn't being as honest but I do love the dancing. I could personally no longer resist the temptation to uh, try this white bread, so we just decided to do it together. So here we go, three, two, one, and I'm, I mean, we're, we're having a moment, okay? We are having a bread loving moment because that white, oh, even just watching this while I'm editing, I'm not even gonna lie, guys, it is making me very, very hungry. Okay, let's bring out the little guy, Mr. Cashman. I interrupted him from playing his video game, so he was not happy, but then he realized there was fresh bread, so he decided to let me live. And I gave him the wheat one, and look, he doesn't even, he's like, no, I'm, I'm not here for it. And X, fail, mommy, fail, try again. And then he's like, hold on, I'm chewing. So he's dancing while he's chewing. Two minutes later, and thanks to the power of editing, okay, now I give him a piece of white bread and fix his hair because what was happening? And he says, score, mommy, win, win. This one is delicious. And they actually had it for breakfast today because they just loved it so much. So there you guys go. Well, that's going to be a wrap for this video. Finally, right? Don't forget that all the links are listed in the description box below and in the first pinned comment for you guys. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. And if you want to be notified when I upload new videos, just click subscribe and turn on that little bell notification. And guys, don't forget to smile, take a deep breath, make a few loaves of bread. We are going to get through this together. From our family to yours, be safe, be well, and be good to each other. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.